we should be heartbroken at the death of anybody who has not accepted Jesus Christ. I'm telling you the truth. But it doesn't happen because we don't know them. No. And it says in Proverbs that we're not to rejoice when our enemy falls. That's right. Well, did the church rejoice when these guys were captured and, and or killed? Yes, they did. Okay. Is it good that they were captured and killed? Well, it was absolutely good that their reign of terror was stopped. Yes. That's the job of the world, the That's government. Right. Our Check job from evil is doers. to bring the good news. Our job is to bring these unlovable people the love of God the Father expressed in Jesus Christ. That is the evidence of a redeemed life. That is the thing that we can do that the world simply cannot do. They don't have the power to love those people. And you would not have the power to love those people if it were not God's love inside of you. He doesn't expect it to be your love to, to do that. But he's given you his love so that you can do exactly that. So they have to be presented. They have to be given an to. opportunity, that and choice. You know what? If you think I'm wrong, show me in the Word of God. Because the Word of God is profitable for reproof, for, for, for correction. If I'm wrong, send me in the Word. I don't care about your opinions. I don't even care about my own opinions. I only care about the Word of God. And the fact that, you know, Alice and I were in Kenya. I was teaching in Kenya, East Africa this year, in the summer. And I was teaching all these pastors and bishops. And in, in the eastern part of Kenya, around Mombasa, there on the sea, and in uh, uh, Nairobi, mm -hmm. my goodness, they are encountering more and more Terrorists. problems with Islam, with radical Islamists. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I mean, two days after we flew out of Nairobi, that's when they had that attack on the mall where so many people, Christians, yeah. were, were tortured killed. And killed. Tortured and killed. Mm -hmm. So I had one of the, a couple of, one of the pastors from Mombasa, mm -hmm. And uh, I was teaching this class, but after the class, he came up to me and we were talking about there's more and more incursion of radical Islam into the areas that he serves God in. And he says, what are we supposed to do? And I said, what you're supposed to do is love them. Honor it with radical Christianity. Radical Christianity. And radical Christianity says, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. Bless them. For this is the will of God. I mean, this is what God said. Look at the Sermon on the Mount and see if Jesus doesn't say, this is what makes you perfect. This is what makes you sons of your Father in heaven. When you love those people who hate you. When you presented that when we were in Belize to a group of pastors and bishops, the, um, the apostle of that whole group said that that concept of forgiving would, re would just revolutionize oh, the church. Oh, that was in, in Cameroon, West Africa. In Cameroon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did I say Belize? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean Belize. No, but that I think I probably preached that kind of message in, in Belize, Belize, too. Yeah, yeah. but in yes, Africa, yeah. they really yeah. needed yes, to they do said, it. Yeah, yeah, they said because that it, would revolutionize In it. that area, there was like a culture of revenge. Yeah. And, yeah. But that's what Jesus said. That is Christianity as presented to be normal by Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount. And the world would see that as a weakness. So if you're examining, but, yes. but this is the point, examine yourselves. This is, we're looking for the evidence of a redeemed life. An unredeemed life does not have the power to love those people. Doesn't have the power to do that. Doesn't have the ability to do that. But a redeemed life has the power to go out and face the largest enemy and bring the love to them now. Yes. That's the ministry that we have in this day and age is a ministry of reconciliation to go and say to those people, no matter what they think, they it doesn't do. matter. Because it is only the Word of God that has the power to change them. Mm -hmm. And to say to them, Jesus Christ died on a cross for you. And I'm going to tell you something. It may not, because it's for whosoever will receive it. That's right. Osama bin Laden may not have received it, but Jesus Christ died on a cross for him. Saddam Hussein, Jesus Christ died on a cross for him. He may not receive it. You know, there are plenty of people in our Western world, nice-looking people, dressed nice, earning lots of money, doing this and doing that. But, not but if they don't receive it, they're in the same place, and they're going to wind up in the same place as Joseph Stalin, as Adolf Hitler, as Osama bin Laden. You're going to wind up in the same place unless you receive and walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the love of God. They have to have the opportunity to choose. 
Is love the evidence of a redeemed life? Yes. Jesus Christ said, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Amen. That is the evidence of a redeemed life, is that love. Nothing has more ability to bring us to the fullness of the visible and victorious life that Jesus desires for us. The life that he spoke of when he said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. When you walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, when you walk in the love of God, when that becomes your desire to grow in the love, because remember, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. We have to get to that place where love is what it's all about in our life. The love that Jesus taught about in the Sermon on the Mount. Not just loving the people that love you. Not just loving the people that are like them. And you want to know something? I said before, your emotions and feelings will change. When you start to pray for your enemies, yes. your feelings about your enemy will change. Right. I promise you that. Yes. When you start to pray for your enemies, the emotions that rise up when they come to your mind will change. Because the Holy Spirit in you will make it happen. Your feelings and emotions will follow the choices that you make right. or the choices you fail to make. I'm telling you the truth. If you reject the love of God, you'll never know how to love others. And if you don't know how to love others, you're going to face Jesus Christ and have to explain why. Ta -da. Love conquers all. Love conquers all and love never fails. Lord, our victor evermore. evermore. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>